clearly is being honest. Mm. And at his least, I don't hear nobody up here giving that man credit for that. Wake that up. But if a dude... If, you say he's being honest. If, if he ain't been shit for 10 years, then he admit he ain't been shit for 10 years? Well, he said that. He then he said, said, then he Fuck said, yeah. she could leave me now, she could leave me later. He's been, he sound like a dude who, when he get caught cheating, he ain't even lying about it. So, I'm going to say this. If we not going to respect, if we not going to respect reality, what are we going to respect? Because he's dealing with reality. He laying it out and let her know, I'm fu- I was fucked up then. Mm. I'm still fucked up now. And I'm gonna be, and, and I cannot guarantee that I won't be fucked up later, which is giving a person a clear option to say, okay, I'm gonna hold you down or I'm not. What I, what I, what I, what I feel like. You are now tuned in to Live on Broadway podcast, the number one relationship podcast in the world. <laughs> so spicy. <laughs> money coming, money. Miss V, I see you. Alexis, I see you. King Sheik, Terika, I see you all. Big energy on Clubhouse, Allison, Ashley, Angel, Toya. I... Let's start this podcast off. Mike, 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 Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another episode of Live on Broadway Podcast. <laughs> greetings and salutations, greetings and salutations to you all. Greetings and salutations to you all. Welcome back to another episode of Live on Broadway Podcast, where the situations matter more than the relationships. Perspectives will be respected, God willing, <laughs> by everybody. And if this is your first time tapping in, don't be easily threatened or angered because much like you, much like you, every giant hair on this platform first started off as a perfect stranger. Lolo, I see you. We ask that everybody tap in to get into with what we're doing on Live on Broadway podcast by way of Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and everywhere else podcasts are available, okay? We ask that everybody tap in and get in tune with what we're doing by way of YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe, please, and thank you in advance. Greetings and salutations to the Giants on Clubhouse, on Instagram, on YouTube, and on Facebook. What up, though, gang? Oh my awesome. God! It's been a busy what? week. It's been a busy one, right? Yeah. It's been a busy one. I appreciate all the love you guys been tapping in and giving us. Uh, the Giants on YouTube. They've been saying that we've been doing and having an amazing show, amazing shows as of late. So thank you everybody that's been tapping in and um showing L O B P love. Uh, we also streaming on YouTube right now. Broadway the Giant. Uh, go over there and tap in so you guys can see us the way we're intended to be seen. And uh, I appreciate it. Uh, the Giants that I'm bringing up on Instagram tonight. Hit that button so I can bring you guys up because we're gonna get and dive straight into the talk because we got some things to discuss tonight. Okay, at Quell, what's happening with you? What's happening with it? Okay, I see you, I see you, beloved. I see you, King City, what up though, my guy? Um, we gonna have some discussions tonight and um, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's this, this talk that we're having tonight is going to be a real one. I'm telling you. <laughs> Um, this is going to be good. Miss V, greetings, Queen. Greetings, greetings to you. I appreciate you guys joining us. Um, as you guys can't tell, if you guys can't tell, excuse me, I have Miss V up here with me. I have at Quell up here with me and I have Clubhouse up here with me and we're going to have a conversation. And um, I would just appreciate it on Instagram if you guys could just keep your mics muted until I point to you so you guys could speak, please. Um, and this is going to be an interesting conversation for a few reasons. For the first reason, it requires a history lesson, right? So I'm going to go get my research. I'm going to give you guys a history lesson so you guys can see and learn and know what the hell is going on and what the fuck Broadway talking about, right? Um, let's move that over. Okay. 
Tonight we're having a conversation about simply the person, TJ Holmes, Amy Robeck, GMA, what you need to know. No pun intended, but there's a lot that you guys need to know. So in order for, the, in order for you guys to learn that, let's start there. We're having a conversation tonight about never leave the one that you love for the one that you work with. Never leave the one that you love for the one you work with. This is going to be important instrumental to the bottom line. Um, so to understand where we're going, you guys got to first understand where we came from. Live on Broadway podcast. Let's talk about it. is talking about. Here's what you need to know. GMA co-anchors TJ Holmes and Amy Robach are an item. All right, let's take a look at the timeline. TJ joined GMA back in 2014, where the pair immediately struck up a friendship. Then in 2020, they paired up to co-host GMA's third hour. They're running buddies, even competing in half marathons together. We're going to both be finishers. Amy and TJ didn't allegedly yeah. start dating until they had separated from their spouses back in August, quote, within weeks of each other. But other reports note the couple has been getting cozy since June. Page six reports Amy is officially divorcing after her husband, Andrew Shu, and that it's, quote, almost finalized. And after all this goes public, TJ and Amy reunite on air, and it is awkward. Who's looking forward to the weekend? Uh, me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so just to give you guys a little bit more backstory, Clubhouse Instagram, y'all heard that? Y'all heard me loud and clear? Okay. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of backstory on what actually is happening, what's going on, Jay? Uh, Amy Robeck, anchor, what's happening with you? Queen, I see you, I see you. <laughs> uh, um, so just to give you guys a little bit of backstory, TJ Holmes and Amy Robeck, anchors for Good Morning America, what you need to know. They started dating, but before they started dating, let's just start back here. They both were married. They both married. Uh, Amy Robeck is married to uh, Andrew Shu, right? He's an actor. Uh, T.J. Holmes married to attorney at Rock Nation. Uh, what's her name? Mary Lee Feibig, something like that. Fig Big or something like that. And the crazy part to it is, is Amy left her husband. I feel like this is like real gossipy, right? I feel like this is, I feel like I'm running a gossip column for some reason. How did we get here, LOBP? We need to do better. I feel like, um, so uh, Amy left her husband, TJ, it's a lot of different moving pieces, so just bear with me. Left her husband to be with TJ, who's a serial cheater. This nigga's a serial cheater, and she left her husband to be with him, and he was cheating with another producer of GMA some time ago named Natasha Singh, I believe. You get me? So the first question that I want to pose to you guys, the first person, the first question I want to pose to you guys is what is or isn't workplace etiquette? What is versus what isn't workplace etiquette? Um, yeah, yeah. So let's start there. Tap in with me. Instagram, one time. Y'all can come off mic. Y'all can come off okay. mute. Tap in. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, I think workplace etiquette is uh, you don't cross the boundaries. You already know uh, if a person is married or if they're in a relationship with somebody, you don't cross those boundaries, right? And I'm gonna say this, she left sugar for shit. Hello. I'm just saying. If he's a serial cheater, listen, if he done it to the wife, he's gonna do it to you, babe. Yo, cootie cat is not made of gold. And even if it was, he still would see somebody else because it's just in him. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Alexis, workplace etiquette. What is that to you? Um, I'm gonna just say it's simple with suggest not to date someone that you work with plain and simple 
for obvious reasons. Business and pleasure probably don't mix, right? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't mix. Aquel, one time, what's workplace etiquette? You look like you're in the workplace right now. You got a boo? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, nah, it's, uh, you don't mix your money with your honey, man. That's it's the one thing you don't do. Like, that's a bad thing to be doing, man, when you start talking about mixing business with pleasure. Mm -hmm. it, it always normally goes out. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. I'm, not I'm, all the time. I, I wouldn't agree with that. And not all the time. My husband and I, we work together for nine and a yeah, half but, years. But most people, can't, most people can't do that, though. Most people can't do that. Like, True. Let's, be, let's be for real. Like, th th that's not the norm. Normally, when we see these situations, it normally goes bad because somebody gets mad, somebody gets jealous, then just say they break up. Then you you in an awkward situation because you dated somebody and you didn't even know it was going to work out. And now that's, that's your workplace. I mean, now you got to look at this person every day. Mm -hmm. But now work together around other people, work together with you two in a small I think that matters. Hey, listen. So, so, so let's do this, right? Let's do this just for just for Instagram purposes. When one person is speaking, can you just mute your mic so that you don't, yeah, do too much on the other end? Clubhouse, tap in with me. What's workplace etiquette? Um, we got Jay, we got Allison, Ashley, Toya, Angel. Tap in with me. What's workplace etiquette? Black Queen, come up here. What's workplace etiquette? Take your time, but hurry up, guys. <laughs> I don't do shit not shit. Boom. Alley Cat. There we go. See, we be on that same time. Y'all said something. Nobody heard what y'all said. What? Say it again. And don't shit where you eat. Don't shit. So wait, the general consensus with workplace etiquette is don't shit where you eat. Am I understanding that, that right? That's correct. Or is that the general? So, so that's what everybody is saying. Yes. Interesting. Let Interesting. Me, let me explain why. Because... All right, tell me. Tell because me more. Say, say you and I work together, hypothetically speaking. You and I work together, and you happen to be um, maybe my supervisor, um, and we are having a workplace romance. There's the, the situation of favoritism where I get less work, or I'm granted vacation, or we're going away together. You're, you're giving me um, different intricacies that you would not be affording to other people that are working with you. Yeah. So, you know, it it's it's not favorable to do that. And in and on the other hand, if I get in trouble or if I do something severe because of the romantic interest, I'm not going to be punished or reprimanded as severely as anybody else. So I'm getting I'm gonna get a slap on the wrist where a other person would get written up and therefore um that's not good at all. Or I may even get a raise for something. You know, I get a seven percent raise and everybody else gets a two percent. That's not fair. So for that reason, um, you're not supposed to date whether you're a subordinate or a peer. Great point of view. Great, great point of view. Uh, but I thought, I thought personally, I thought women like dating the boss. I thought women like the, you know what I mean, yo. If I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm got top rank, you know, maybe you want to get those little pluses, those little, you know what I'm saying. Maybe you want to get that free get metro card. It, Maybe you, huh? What? Huh? If you can get, if you can get away with it, and if you can separate it, then fine. But the thing, the problem is that it gets muddled when p things are revealed. People can date privately under the radar, but once people find out and um everything is revealed, then little things are being picked apart, and it's like, okay, well, so that's why such and such got this, or oh, that's why this this happened. So it has to be very, very discreet if it happens it, at all. It, um, Allison, is there anybody that you know right now that's dating at your job? Hello. Um, no. You want to shit? No, but I do know. I do know people. You're lying. Know. You're lying. You're lying. I can hear it. You're lying. I know. I can people. hear it. We all can hear you lie. You're lying. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, oh, tap in with me. Have kids. Yeah, I know people that date and have kids together, but they don't right, work cool. in the same department. I just think, all right, so I'm, I'm going to throw it to Jay, Toya, and everybody else, but I just think that, I think that it's complicated, right? And I think we're sitting from a vantage point of what we would want to do versus what we probably would do if we was actually in that situation. I think sometimes it hits a little bit different when we're sitting there and saying, 
Like I could sit here all day and say, nah, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But there have been moments where you might be minding your business and you find yourself at the water cooler and you have a conversation. Like, let's just put it like this. I remember being younger and you working and, you know, you see that chick or you see that dude, I presume, and you like, damn, she a hype. You know what? The next day when I come into work, I'm taking a little bit longer on that little iron and press. You get what I'm saying? I'm making sure that collar's set up. That blazer do what it's supposed to do. You know, and my cologne is slapping. You get me? I need one if I walk by for you to smell me from the way on. You get what I'm saying? So my thing is, is it is it practical though? Is it is it is it possible to date somebody and be successful in date and not have it impede on your work relationship? Greetings, Benoit. Tap in with me, um, J uh, J Angel Ashley. I mean, I would. I wish it was possible. I mean, I personally, not my job now, but years ago. I dated a coworker and it did not end well whatsoever because some people don't know how to not bring that in a work environment. So mm -hmm. I suggest for people not to do it. Okay. Okay. Jay? What's up, bro? How you doing, brother? Greetings, I, I, greetings. Greetings, King. Yeah, I highly suggest do not do it because, first of all, um, there's a power dynamic there, right? So let's say it is your boss and things go south. What are you going to do about your job? But let's just say it's just a regular coworker and things go south. Now you got to see these people every day. It's just not worth the headache. You know, that's just how I see it. It's just not worth the headache. <sighs> All right, cool. The plot thickens because these two don't only date. But there's been a lot of a, a lot of scrutiny given and shot towards TJ Homewrecker. We just gonna call him TJ Homewrecker for the rest of the podcast, okay? TJ Homewrecker. There's been a lot of flack sent his way because he wrote something, and um, I'm gonna have Allison pull it up and read it in a moment. But um, for the time being, I want to play you guys this clip live on Broadway podcast. So let me just say my piece. Obviously, the story is bad enough, right? But there's one particular Facebook post that PJ Holmes allegedly made about his wife that's been going around social media that has triggered me, my soul. He allegedly made this post two years ago about his wife, and he's basically talking about how for the last 10 years of their marriage, he has put her through hell. And he is thanking her for her ability to stick it out with him, and he's thanking her for all of the things that she's put up with with him. And he calls her ability to do that, her built-in black woman superpower. If you're a black woman, or any woman really, listening to this message right now, I want you to hear me. Your ability to stick around and deal with a man's continual disrespect and disregard is not a superpower. Stop letting men or lack discipline and who do not appreciate you manipulate you into thinking that putting up with their BS somehow makes you good or well, yeah. Yourself. If the price of that man's love costs you your self-respect, self-worth, your inner peace, your pride, mm. then that's a price that's too high. You deserve a love that is a of heartbreak, insecurity, and disrespect. You deserve a love from a man that does not play about you, your mental health, or your emotional security. This man made a mockery of her as his wife in this post. He literally played in her face in front of all of their social media friends. It is embarrassing. Mm. It is not tactful. And it is far less than what she or any woman out there deserves. Do you believe that he wrote this, he wrote this, 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 what you call this thing? This is like manifest, this, this fake manifesto about his professing, this professing his love for his woman, uh, attorney, Rock Nation. She thought that they was working out the relationship. Post the situation that he had with Natasha, uh, Singh, former producer of GMA. 
Robin, whatever her name is, the other anchor knew what was going on, and she was like, "Yo, um, y'all niggas better stop it." But uh, easy off for that a little bit. I think two things can be true here. I think he can say those things and mean those things, and I think he meant it probably from a good aspect, but he didn't know that it would come back and bite him in his ass. Mm -hmm. So that you. To, to that you say what, Instagram? And you have to show... You know, oh, no, no, I was just going to say, you got, you got to show measurable progress when 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 you have this stuff. Mm. So it can't be where I'm doing something and I'm not showing any type of progress that I'm changing. It has to be measurable. It has to be within a realistic standpoint. But um, I think once you... If a certain amount of time has passed and something keeps occurring, then, you know, we, we, we got to hold you accountable for that because... You know, after a certain amount of time and you haven't changed something, you're not going to change. I like that. Uh, can I just be Miss B real quick? Hey, the only way can I like I it to be. Can I be Miss B real quick? Let's make it up, Miss B. Nigga, you can take that shit. But guess what I'm getting ready to do? What you about to do? Uh, I'm going to call my attorney. And uh, I don't know if they do this in New York. Uh -huh. But you do know that you can sue the other lady, yes, for messing up your marriage, right? You can, you can do that. You can do that. Hey. You can do that. Wait, yes. what? Come again say what? You can actually sue the other lady for messing up your marriage. But why? You can mm. do that. The plot I know, it's, I know it's true in North Carolina. It's true in North Carolina. If I had some pearls, I'd be clutching them right now, God damn it. What do you mean? <laughs> so so that means that you can sue somebody that messes up. So it's, Emotional it's, distress. Emotional distress. All of that. Yes. yes. All Jesus. of that. Mm -hmm. That's called alienation of affection. For him to make a mockery of her like that, you know, I'm sure she wanted to give him a chance and an opportunity to get it right. But yeah. then you know. You, yeah, in your heart, you know yeah. when some shit ain't right. You know. And when this came out, she knew before it came out, I guarantee you. Mm. She just waiting for it to play on out. The, the interesting... And I be doing this. You drink, sipping your tea? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, ben, Benoit, uh, Angel, tap in with me. I guess the question that, that I'm leaning towards is he said and had all these good things to say were well, backdoor compliments, right? Because the piece that he gave about, hey, you know, um, you stuck with me through a lot. Uh, you know what? Allison, do you have that up? Can, can, can you read what he wrote, please, Queen? So, I so that sure we could... too, yes. Thank you, Queen. So he says, this was a decade challenge because they were married for 10 years. So um, next to two pictures of them on their wedding day and a more recent one, uh, he posted this. This particular hashtag decade challenge is a little late, but 10 years ago, Mary Lee Phoebe married me. And mm. despite my best efforts, she remained married to me for the past 10 years. That's not hyperbole. I'm not being dramatic. I gave her plenty of reasons, excuses, and opportunities to walk her fine ass out the door. But instead, with her built-in Black woman superpower, she showed a grace and patience that's incomprehensible. Asking mm. her for another 10 years would be asking too much. Another 10 months? That may even be a stretch. If she gave me another 10 weeks, I should consider myself lucky. If she puts up with me for another 10 days, I'd be grateful. Mm. But if she would even spare another 10 minutes of her time for me today, I should consider myself blessed. This Mary Lee Thiebig Holmes, y'all, and I, TJ Holmes, do solemnly swear that I was her decade challenge. Now, this is the most backhanded, asinine thing I've seen because what you're basically oh, telling no. us is that, yeah, I did all of this shit things all of these shitty things, all of this mm -hmm. fuckery, and mm -hmm. yeah, you stayed. Even though I wanted to go, but you decided to stay. So, I mean, I guess you're going to have to deal with me because, you know, I'm here and you're here. So, you know, 
you could leave if you want to, but here I am. Yeah, no. So, so. Um, oh, oh, my God. Can I speak? So, oh, my God. Yeah, go, go for it, Angel. <sighs> that had to be the biggest piece of narcissistic caca I've heard. Like, and he actually plastered that. He plastered that. Like, it was so microaggressive. Like, me, if I would, listen, Jesus, have mercy. Like, he literally, just just like Ali said, he literally basically said, this is what I heard. You could have went boo. You didn't go boo. Shout out to you for not leaving, boo. But now you're here and you got to deal with what I do. Literally, that's what I heard. Wow. Wow. Yep. Backhanded compliments from beginning to end. And it's not giving her praise at all. It's basically saying, yeah, I'm a shit person and this is what you you're ending deal with up it. with. Oh, and yep. I don't like the fact that he brought her, her race into it or who she was, a black woman. And you left, yo, like, to, are you serious? It's because he went with the white woman. But, right. but hold on, e, e, hold, but hold on, e, e, easy. <sighs> all right. Am I fair attempt? You know, I can't even say it because it's going to sound like I'm shooting them bell. Um, Alexa, to you, um, how do you, <laughs> um, how do you feel? I mean, he, he had a lot to say. Oh, God, I'm calling you and my Alexa is, is, is responding. This is crazy. All right. Um, hey, tap in with me. Um, okay, can you rephrase the question? Let me make sure I'm understanding you correctly. Cool. No problem. This letter, it's not even a question. It's more so confronting and dealing with that letter. I mean, that post, right? The caption underneath the post, uh, your black your black woman superpower. You know, I guess that's the stay down until you come up philosophy. And how do you feel in regards to that? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, I definitely feel, I could feel a little disrespected as far as, um, saying just because we are a certain skin color that we do have to put up with more, you know, mm -hmm. to do so. I personally don't think um, being called a black queen is a compliment. Um, that's something I always tell women as well. I prefer, I think we need to be less queens, more princesses sometimes, because when we talk about being queens, it like gives us a lot more respect. <sighs> Come on, Broadway. <laughs> but it gives us a lot more responsibility that we don't necessarily ask for or necessarily have to deal with. But if we just be more on the princess side, it's like we're being more so catered to and taken care of rather than that we don't, we never signed up for. Yeah. Yeah. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I get that. I get that. So you feel like being called a queen, you feel like, there's a there's a there's a um stigma with that, opposed I, it being a compliment. I do. I think when we I feel okay. Every woman has a birthright to be called a queen. We all have some type of royal throne that we're born with to be called a queen. However, in in a sense, it's made us really dependent. I'm sorry, it made us really independent, which is not always a good thing. It made us really independent, and it makes us feel as if we have to take on as many responsibilities as we can. Yeah. But in reality, we don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bar. Welcome, collectors. Welcome, welcome, beloved. Yo, peace, King. Peace, peace. Um, I gotta, I, I gotta say something. You know, I'm gonna jump on here. Queen does not mean that. Queen means royalty. Queen does not mean a person, a female has to be independent and take on. Nah, queen is a praise. It's like a something precious. It's a leader. It's, well, it's powerful. Well, let me play devil's advocate that. for a moment. I don't believe that the term queen has made ladies feel like they have to be independent. Mm. So what do you feel has? Made ladies feel like they have to be independent? Sure. The reality of having to be independent. The reality of not having nobody to depend on. And that's an individual thing. <clears throat> mm. We tend to get, we tend to get, um, engulfed in what media gives us years going on but if you go in these white communities they got single white moms they got asian white moms they got indian white moms okay talk about it but they don't promote that they don't promote the single black women the the, the 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 black male being missing out the household and things of that nature 
but I don't want to go too far off of the bills. I want to speak on what the brother said. Okay, so 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 just quickly, right? Because um, just on the queen aspect of things, right? And shout out to Benny because she said she taught me something a little while ago. And then I did my research and realized that what she said was very true, right? And I'm pretty sure she'll be able to um, uh, she'll be able be able to go a bit further in what I'm about to say about queen and the word queen and what it means, right? There's two different spellings of queen, right? As we know it, right? There's Q U E E N and then there's Q U E A N. Right. Yeah. And, and, and I think the 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 A N has a whole different definition beside it than what royalty means. Miss V. OK, so I want to say this, um, Alexis, when you came on, I was going to say, hey, princess, I, <laughs> I was, um, I, you know, I, I agree with you, what you said, because I view myself as a queen and my definition of, of a queen is royalty and untouchable. Mm-hmm. That that's that's my definition, and then I feel like I'm untouchable, and I am the queen of <laughs> of everything. You you feel me? And that's not to say I'm sorry. That's not to say that um you know uh I'm taking on this or taking on that. It's just how I feel when sure. when I dress as a queen. I feel so respected. Then that's just me. Now my my granddaughters, and I, I get what you're saying. Um, princess. I get what you're saying because I call them princesses because I want them to feel dainty and all this. But when yeah. they get a certain age, I will address them as queens because they are going to be queens. And my grandson, I address him as a prince and letting him know now he's going to be a king as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I, 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 I want to give the floor back to you guys, but I just want to say this one thing here. Welcome, Cassis. I see you. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, guys, on YouTube. Hit that like button, please, and thank you in advance. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. What I want to say to um, what I want to say to you is, I understand and I like that piece that Alexis gave about the word queen, right? About the empowering and and the independent. You know, easier for Broadway for a second. Go ahead, um, collectors. You wanted to say something. You was in the middle of your piece. Before. Oh, I was. Yeah, yeah. I was just. I was just saying that that part. Like everything else she said, I was jacking. But I don't feel like it makes a woman have to feel independent. But um, I just want to drop a quick build about what the brother was, the, the, whoever that was that wrote that to his wife. He clearly is being honest. Mm. And at his least, I don't hear nobody up here giving that man credit for that. Wake that up. But if a dude... If, you say he's being honest. If, if he ain't been shit for 10 years, then he admit he ain't been shit for 10 years? Well, he said that. He then he said, it. then he Fuck said, yeah. she could leave me now, she could leave me later. He's been, he sound like a dude who, when he get caught cheating, he ain't even lying about it. Ah, so I'm going to say this. If we not going to respect, if we not going to respect reality, what are we going to respect? Because he's dealing with reality. He laying it out. Let her know I'm fu- I was fucked up then. Mm. I'm still fucked up now. And I'm going to be, and, and I cannot guarantee that I won't be fucked up later. Which is giving a person a clear option to say, okay, I'm going to hold you down or I'm not. What I, what, I, what, I, what I feel like shouldn't be happening is these labels being put on it. Like, oh, that's a strong black woman because she took his shit. No, 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 Yeah. She's whoever her name is, her first name, her last name, because she took his shit. She's an individual that's built to take his shit until she feels like it stinks. Yeah. But at its least, that man... Is keeping it a bang. So are you and saying that we are? So are you saying that we aren't appreciating the the honesty aspect to it? I, now, I don't hear not since I've been on. I hear that oh, a person. I, I mean, hold us accountable, right? Yeah, yeah, at least he's yeah, not hiding behind other shit. Way acting like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know what? People have ways of doing things. You see what I'm saying? Because inside of that, I hear apology also. But but you, you know what? Ways of doing things. So hold on, like Angel. I'm gonna come to you in a second, Angel. Just like he embarrassed his woman in public. Yeah. In that speech, you hear apology in there also. I'm not saying that she should take it. I'm not saying that's how you apologize. Yeah. But I'm saying at least he ain't out here shucking and fucking jiving like a lot of these motherfuckers. I don't know who he is. I don't know who that female is. So, so, so here's the thing. That statement, Here, here's he spoke the, it clear. Here's the thing, right? And I understand why you're saying that, right? Because if, if I was listening to it the way that I heard it from you, 
I will understand that too. The thing is, is he already got caught and jammed up with Natasha. With, with, um, when the she, she could have left. She could have left. left she could have. But, but 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 hold on. In the black community, let's just hold us ourselves accountable. We often scream. We give up too easy, right? So now here you have a great example of a black woman being there and being supportive in the face of adversity for her relationship. And she's fighting for her relationship. So does it make her, does it make her uh, 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 less, less of a woman because she, because she stayed? I in think that's opinion, the strength of a no. woman. In my opinion, hell no. You know why? Because who knows how happy they are aside from how much problems they have. Mm. I've been in a relationship where we had problems, okay. and then when we had good times, dumb shit was immaculate, bro. Yeah. But the problems matched them, too. Yeah. So who's to say what's going on on the good side of things to why she stayed? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, look, at, I don't look at her as being ignorant. I look at that, man. You know, this is choice gang over here. You got choices in life. I follow. I follow. You choose. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody, hand, ain't nobody handcuffing you to them. You choose, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think it's I think it's fair enough that you know he he rolled he rolled that shit out straight up. I see you. I see you. Nah, um let's 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 let's, let's shave it. Let's let's share let's share the wealth. Um Angel, tap in with me. I hear you, uh Allison, Ooh. give me a second. Angel was trying to get in there. Shut tap up. in with me, Angel. You know, let me say this. I am all for transparency. I I, I love it. I love it. But here's the thing, right? Transparency without accountability is game. You run in game. You're a pimp to me. Whether you're a man or a woman, because what I wow. heard was I I fuck up. I fuck up often. I'm really that dude. You stood by me, right? And that was it. Sorry? No, because it's not, sorry would have been good had this been the first time. This is his lifestyle. This is who this man is. And I, it, it, I don't know, I'm triggered. I actually had somebody tell me, um, I, was, you know, I was in a relationship with, you know, that because they shared, you know, their infidelity with me um, or whatever, their, their thoughts that, that, um, that, I should, he should have been absolved for them because, you know, just what Collector said, a lot of dudes ain't out here doing it. But the issue I had with him was, but you did it again, Papa. So a lot of men, and I, and I don't know if there's women who do it, they use that. That's a whole form of game to keep people manipulated. It is narcissistic and is borderline abusive. <laughs> But who fault is it for accepting it, sweetheart? No, listen, both of them. Niggas is selling crack on the corner. Niggas is still selling crack on the corner right now. But who's going up there to buy it? That's when you know yeah. what crack is going to do to you. Oh, man. I have to agree with, um, I'm sorry, what's your name, Ain't King? The collectors. 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 The collectors. I, I, I have to agree with you. And, and now since the way you said it and, and just playing it back in my mind, yeah. even though he didn't just come right out and say, I'm sorry, we do have choices. And as a woman, he's saying, I, I ain't shit. But I appreciate you for saying, and if you say 10 days, 10 seconds, you know, I will be blessed. So that's him just pretty much keeping it 100, you know. And if She might need like, to check her mental health on why she accepted not shit for that long. So, so well, Bob, that, well, 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 hold on, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Because the interesting part to it is, inside of all this, is it sounds to me like we're victim shaming. She the one that was thank cheated you, on. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not at all. All right, I'm, 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 hold on, hold on. Something you're not a victim, wait. No, but but when no, I, something you're not a victim. I believe two. I, I believe two things can be true. I believe you can be a victim and and. And I believe that you you can still stay in a relationship and try to and try to work things out, and that's what I think his wife was doing. And that's not an option. Uh, but we all have options from the beginning, right? Yeah, right. It wouldn't make she could have left. It wouldn't make it any. It wouldn't. You can't, you can't, it wouldn't make you it. Stay, if you stay in a house full of if you if you choose to stay in a house full of bloods and you a crip, nigga, that ain't that's your choice. 
You could have got it cracking when you got in there and got packed up and shipped out. So when she, I'm not victim shaming at all. What he does, what he's doing inside of a married relationship is wrong. But he's not hiding it and he's not lying about it. I see he's what you're giving saying. her the option to yeah. take the proper step to remove herself. Yeah. He's basically telling you, this ain't good for you. I know I ain't good for you. Because good is good for good. Good ain't good for bad. But, so she might need to evaluate why she's accepting less. That's not shaming her. I That's think, not shaming her. I think, I, but, I, but I listen. I'm to my sister like, yo, sis, that nigga ain't all that for you. Why are you accepting that? But see, here, here, here's the here's interesting part to it. I feel like you're not victim shaming, right? But you're saying because he told the truth, it justifies the fact that he was... No, hold no, on, no, wait, no, hold no, on, hold no, on, no. hold on. Let me work, let me because work. Hold on, saying. let me work it, let me work. I feel like, yeah, he's telling the truth, right? And we can hold ourselves accountable and say something. It don't mean what I said makes it any righter than what I did. My travesties, my, 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 my offense has already been offended. Yet I've already offended. I've already done this thing to you. So I, I just feel like, and I see what you're saying, collectors. I'm definitely running concurrent with what you're saying because he said it. He owned the truth. So now he gave the power to her whether or not she should leave or stay. I get you. I feel you. Everybody hit that like button. We got way too many people in here right now that's not hitting that like button. Please and thank you, YouTube viewership. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Give me one. Go for it, Lexus. Okay, I wanted to say something about what uh, Mr. Collector said. I understand your standpoint, but um, speaking on when you said at least he's being honest or apologizing in a sense, I think the apology is more so not for no, us. No, 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 no. I didn't say he was. I Hold on. He might. Hold on. Let, let her finish her, her POV, though. Yeah, I didn't say he was. He might be apologizing. Okay, well, let's say if he was apologizing, um, I think that's more so for her rather than for us and for everyone mm. else. But for that, though, what I was going to say. Right. I think, um, and that's why I said that he might be right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And you got yeah. it. He probably right. But the thing is, we're talking about, well, at least he's taking accountability. But what's the cost? Good point, Alexis. Yeah, but what's the cost, though? Because a lot of times we try to justify our unacceptable behavior just because we take accountability for them. But it's not, um, you know, like, like it's okay. Because for an example, we could be a cheater, abusive, a liar, but just because you say, well, that's just how I am, that's still, it's taking accountability, but that's not making it um, justifiable. You know what I mean? She said it, I didn't. Stand in front I, I of that, collector. That, yeah. Stand in front of that. I, I, agree, I agree with that. Wrong is wrong. She, I'm not saying wrong is not wrong. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just want to add the point in that you cannot force feed somebody who's not going to you know what I'm saying? Open their mouth and take the food. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 clear. You know it's not. You know it's clear. And I'm I'm I stand behind um what I'm saying about a person accepts things. Like we gotta hold ourselves to a certain level. If you don't hold yourself to a certain level in life, you will be used and abused in every relationship you deal with. I'm talking about business. I'm talking about friendship. I'm talking about intimacy. I'm yeah. talking about at work. You have to hold yourself to a certain level and say, this is what I accept and this is what I don't accept. Not this is what I accept when I'm with somebody. Not this is what I accept when I'm in Broadway's neighborhood. Not this is what I accept when I'm around Miss B. This is what I accept, period. 